explain. And I think that has a message. You can tell them we didn't come here to swap recipes. Sometimes, headlines refer to her simply as Myra because the last name wasn't necessary. As Detroiters knew, Myra meant Myra Wolfgang, the fiery labor leader who had devoted her life to the members of the hotel, motel, and restaurant employees and bartenders international union, and to anyone who suffered discrimination at the hands of their employers. She stood up to public figures when she believed them to be wrong. She captivated local media who relished her quotes, reported gleefully on union strike tactics that thwarted and embarrassed management. She raised two daughters and soldiered on when her husband, Mo, a rock of strength in her crisis-filled environment, died when she was just in her 40s, plunging her into a once unimaginable life without him. Along the way, she inspired countless young women to believe they could be more and do more. Myra Kummeroff Wolfgang's lifelong commitment to labor organizing began after she was forced to drop out of an interior design program at Carnegie Mellon due to the Great Depression. At the suggestion of a friend, she went to Detroit's local 705 looking for work. By the end of the day, Louis Koenig, the union secretary treasurer, hired her to be his secretary. She had taken the first step towards becoming the woman she was meant to be. Wolfgang quickly rose from secretary to union organizer and contract negotiator. In 1937, Local 705 organized a sit-down strike at the Woolworths department store at Woodward and Grand River in downtown Detroit. At 23, Myra walked into the store, blew a whistle, and a pink-collar sit-down strike began. It lasted eight days and generated nationwide publicity. Over the next few years, Wolfgang's local grew in scope and power. Unions, such as the Teamsters, respected their picket lines and refused to cross them to make deliveries. In the midst of all this, Myra Komarov met Mo Wolfgang, a lawyer and the man who would become her husband. They would raise two daughters, Martha and Laura. By the 1940s, Myra had become an international vice president of her union and a go-to authority on wages, hours, and women in the workforce. The Detroit Free Press called her the most important woman unionist in the country. In 1964, when she was trying to bring the Detroit Playboy Club into the union, she sent her daughter Martha, who was then 17, to apply for a job. She had no qualms about dressing her daughter in a tight skirt, high heels, and lots of makeup to play detective during the extensive bunny interview process. Wolfgang was sought after as an authority of women, wages, and working conditions, serving on many organizations from presidential commissions on down but her activism went beyond the workplace. She took part in the Civil Rights March in Selma. She opposed the war in Vietnam and called on other union leaders to oppose it too. In her later years, Myra Wolfgang was one of the founders of the Coalition of Labor Union Women, formed to help women become leaders in their unions and give their issues greater weight during contract talks. She was the presiding officer at Clue's first conference, which attracted more than 3,000 women from 82 unions. One of the young labor organizers who was there that day remembers Myra as one of the best speakers she had ever listened to, who inspired the union women to just say things the way they are. <laughs> 